I will promise you in five years from now, you'll thank me. And I remember when I first started, it felt like I was doing nothing. I almost wanted to sit there and be like, I had those thoughts like, this is a waste. That $185 that's just sitting there, I could pay off this or I could go out and do this. Why am I doing this? But I promise you over time, it is extremely powerful. Ever wonder what people do with their stimulus checks? Well, I'm here to tell you, I talk to a lot of people and they spend their money on the silliest things. My name's Joe Mava here with Master Life by Design and it would shock you how many people actually just blow their stimulus money on pointless things. Starbucks, McDonald's, just things that they don't need, right? Like it's just extra money. I saw a post online the other day. It was about how the stimulus checks were coming out and all of a sudden Walmart had TVs lined up for $550, just enough for you to get something and a brand new TV that you don't need, right? It's like, how silly is that? So today, I wanna share with you five ways that you can be able to spend your stimulus money that most people, they never do. So the first thing is this. Look, let's be honest. A lot of people in today's time, we want instant gratification, so what do we do? We go into debt, baby. We put on that credit card, and all of a sudden, we swipe and it's ours. However, we build up debt over time because we're not consciously checking how much we're spending over the course of a week or even a month, right? And so the first step you can do is pay off your debt. Now, maybe $600 isn't a huge amount and it might not take a huge chunk, but it can help, especially if you have credit cards that are like 14, 18, 20, some people are 24.99% on their credit cards. Are you kidding me? My advice would be pay the highest credit card off first. That's where I would start because you're going to spend the most interest on it. However, if you have a credit card that's under $600 or at $600, I would pay that bad boy off just to get the win, the momentum. It's like a, a checkbox, right? You're like, yes, I got this victory. So first, start paying off your debt because I see too many people who are a slave to debt. And I will tell you, if you're one of those people who are looking to buy a real estate or even qualify for a loan for a vehicle, right? You need your debt to income ratio to be as low as possible. Plus, you don't wanna have this monthly payment that knocks you out of qualification for a home or something of that nature. So the first thing is, pay off your debt, okay? Number two, the second most important thing, and look, this is huge. You have to have an emergency fund. Put that money away for a rainy day, or maybe if a global pandemic happens again, right? You wanna have money in the bank so that if you were to lose your job or anything like that, you would have some money on hand, cash on hand. And it's not a bad idea to withdraw and have it somewhere safe in your home. However, I would have that emergency fund because I always recommend to my clients, the most successful people, they have an emergency fund of anywhere from two to 12 months of expenses. It's entirely up to you how much you wanna save. Me personally, I like to have a year of expenses, cash on hand, or well, maybe not cash, but in the bank cash, right? I wanna have 12 months in case something was to happen. I could pay my mortgage, I could pay my car payments, I could pay my insurances, my investment portfolios, all of that. I wanna make sure that if there's a big rainy day, I'm prepared. There's a stat out there, and forgive me, I don't know the exact number right now. However, I think it was over 70% of people don't have $1,000 in their savings account. Are you kidding me? They don't even have $1,000. Now, I remember when I was broke and was 40 grand in debt, I didn't have any money to my name. <laughs> that was a challenge, but I had to slowly work my way up. I started paying off debt, then I started building an emergency fund. So number two is have an emergency fund. That's the second way you could spend your stimulus check. Number three, this is a little bit different. This is a little bit odd, however, I would take it and invest it in the personal development. Now, if your debt's paid down, you have an emergency fund, go invest in personal development. Well, Joe, what is personal development? Well, that means any books, any events, online seminars, if they have in-person seminars, right? I would go and invest in you. Warren Buffett said the best investment is you. It's the six inches between your ears that's going to help you create a massive return. If you study anyone who's successful, what they've done is they started filling themselves with this knowledge on how to become a better individual, speaker, whatever your profession is, a better um, 
internet marketer, network marketer, whatever that is, they started to invest in themselves. I have a rule with my clients that if we're gonna work together, it's a non-negotiable, you must feed your brain for 30 minutes every day. And whenever I get interviewed on YouTube shows like this or podcasts, I always say the same thing. If you feed your brain more than you feed your body, your life would go in an entirely different direction. But the challenge is most people never do it. And the biggest tip that I'll say is go on Audible. Get the monthly membership for $15.99 or whatever it is. I'll put a link below in the comments, but get an Audible account. What's really cool, most people don't understand is you get a $600 check, you spend $15 a month. After a year, that's 180 bucks, 200 bucks, and you still have $400 left over, but you are that much more powerful. But go and get an Audible account, and the trick that, it, that I love and that I discovered was it's like a library card. If you buy a book on the monthly subscription and you finish it, you can turn that book in and get another book completely free. When I found that out, that was so cool to me because it's like a library book. Finish the one book and return it, right? And so you can do that over and over again every time your monthly subscription hits. So I would encourage you to start there, something to feed your brain, okay? So that's what most successful people do is they feed their brain every day. All right, what is the fourth one? The fourth one is pretty obvious, yet so many people, they don't do it, and it shocks me. It blows my mind, and that is invest the money. Invest the money. See, successful people invest. Unsuccessful people spend. They spend on the lattes, the restaurants, the movies, right? However, Successful people, they take that and they go and invest. Now, what I would encourage you guys to do, if you're not one of those people who do day trading or you're really up to speed on the markets, you get with a financial planner or you could get in some of these funds that are pretty simple, like the M1 fund. You can look that up. I might, I'll put a link below for you guys. But you could go in and put in money into a fund and just let it go and just keep adding. But I would really get a financial advisor Sit down, get your goals clear. What's it gonna take to get there so that you know exactly what you need to do and how much you can put away over time. I would encourage you to invest so that you guys can get in the game. See, most people who are unsuccessful, they never step into the game, right? They're always on the sideline watching, but they never go into the game. And I remember many years ago, I would sit back and I'd be like, all right, I'm just gonna put this money in my savings account, which gets me less than 1% on my money each month, which is our like highway robbery, <laughs> right? But I was just sitting on the sideline. I was like, years ago, I made it. No, I'm going to get in the game. I'm gonna start investing 3% of my income every month, no matter what, first thing and I started doing that and then I went to five and then I went to seven and then 10 and then beyond and beyond and beyond that, right? But you have to get in the game. You're never gonna win the game if you don't get in it. So invest, get with a financial planner, make sure they're a fiduciary also. If you don't know what a fiduciary is, go look it up because it's so important that you find one when it comes to your investment portfolio because the difference of 1% to 2% in fees over the course of the lifetime of your portfolio could cost you hundreds if not millions of dollars. Don't let that person take advantage of you, okay? Make sure you know that they're on your side, on your team. We'll make another video about that at some other time. What I would encourage you guys to do if you really want to keep it simple, go into EFTs, go into indexes, really simple. An index is just a, a whole portfolio of funds that it's like all in one and you get a little bit of each one, which is really cool around these different companies that are out there. Now, there's different index funds, there's different EFTs. You'll have to do your research and study and learn this. But over time, if you keep going in the game and spending a little bit of time each week learning, you'll get a better idea on how to invest it. Now, I get the question all the time, Joe, do you invest in Bitcoin? I have some, but cryptocurrency is not something for me that I'm going all in on. There's a ton of people who are and who've made a ton of money. There's just a lot of risk and volatility, but that's, that's in anything, right? That's in anything. And so I will say you do what feels comfortable for you because that is going to be the most important decision of your life is what do you invest in Bitcoin, index fund, EFTs, because that's what's gonna dictate where you are in the future. But you won't have a future if you don't get in the game now. You must get in the game now. So that's number four. 
The last one, number five, this is one that a lot of people probably won't agree with, but to me, I've seen the power personally and professionally by doing this, and number five is invest in you for whatever makes you feel confident. For example, I had a mentor once, his teeth were just a little jacked up, were a little discolored, so what he did? He went and invested in braces. He got braces and then he got his teeth whitened. And all of a sudden, he had this confidence about him where he's always shied away. He always kind of covered his mouth a little. He was a little embarrassed. So what is it for you? Maybe you do need to go get your teeth fixed. Maybe you gotta go tanning, right? Or go out in the sun if it's the summertime, right? Go get a freaking tan if that's what you need. Maybe it's you need to go get upgrading your wardrobe, right? Some of us, we just wear the same clothes we've had for years and it's like, have do you know, think about the last time you bought a brand new pair of shoes. Imagine how you felt then. When you put them on, they felt snug, it, they were clean and fresh. Like, how did you feel? Felt like you were a million dollars, right? And so I'm not sitting here saying, go spend thousands of dollars on clothes because I've done that and that's what helped me get into $40,000 that many years ago. But what I would say is go get a few brand new shirts, maybe a pair of shoes or pants, something over time that allows you to feel even more confident about yourself because the better you feel about you, the more chances or opportunities that you'll take advantage of. Now, here's one trick that I like to do, me and my wife. We like to, every time we close a deal or we get paid or whatever, what we like to do is go and buy one article of clothing. So maybe it's a new shirt, maybe it's a pair of pants, maybe it's a pair of shoes, but one every time we get paid, right? We make money. And the reason being is it's just one thing that allows us to feel more empowered and more confident about ourselves and slowly over time, it builds a wardrobe, right? So what is it for you? Maybe some of you, you need to get your hair done, your nails did, whatever that is. Maybe for you guys, you gotta get lined up really nice. Maybe you gotta color your hair. What is it? I don't know, if you need to do something to your vehicle that's gonna make you feel even better about where you're driving. Like I remember when I was uh, 26, I had this, I bought a Honda Civic. I was driving up to the Bay Area in California and it was around Thanksgiving time frame. I looked off the road, someone stopped and I got in an accident and I had a dent. And I drove around for months because I was kind of like broke at that point. But I drove around with a dent in my hood for the longest time. And I should have just spent a couple hundred dollars to get it fixed. I know it would have felt way better about myself, but I didn't. So if you're one of those people where you got a couple dings or maybe you need to get your interior washed, go do it. These things that are gonna allow you to feel better about yourself, you're gonna show up more confident in what you do and when you present who you are to other people. Because remember, you only get one shot at making a first impression. Think about that. You get one shot to implant an image on someone for the rest of your life with them, right? Now, can you change it over time? Sure, but that original imprint's always going to be there, right? So go think about that. Remember, the more you invest right now, the better life will be in the future. You wanna live in the moment, but you also wanna live for the future and be prepared. Because I'll tell you, there's gonna be a shock in about 20 years when people who are my age are starting to retire or retire, which there's really no retirement nowadays. And for those of you that are doing something you love, like I am right now, you're not gonna ever retire. You're always gonna do what you're called to do, your mission in life. So with that, everyone is at a different place in their life. You gotta figure out where you are, but those are five powerful ways to spend your stimulus check. And if you're one of those people who you've got your, your debt paid down, you've got your emergency fund bill, go invest it. Go invest it in you, go invest it in your portfolio, go spend it on something that's gonna raise your confidence even more. If you're at that point where you're just, you're kind of broke and you need that money, pay your bills, but take some of it and put it away in the emergency fund. Even if it's a hundred dollars or ten dollars something to plant to see to start that habit i will promise you in five years from now you'll thank me and i remember when i first started it felt like i was doing nothing i almost wanted to sit there and be like i had those thoughts like this is a waste that 185 dollars that's just sitting there i could pay off this or i could go out and do this why am i doing this but i promise you over time it is extremely powerful so with that 
Hope this helps. If you like this video, please share it with someone, hit the thumbs up button, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel because 2021 is gonna be an extraordinary year. There's gonna be more powerhouse interviews, knowledge, bombs being dropped on this YouTube channel. We appreciate you. And if you're one of those people that took your money and invested it, please comment below. I'd love to know what did you do to invest your stimulus check. All right, guys, Joe Moffat with Master Life by Design. See ya.